All right, so we are going to start out talking about balancing chemical equations in this section. So it's kind of a mix of a couple ideas in this area. So um, it is a shorter section. Uh, so this is going to kind of be like a skill video, a uh, little bit of information with it, uh, just on how to do this process. So this is a process we're going to talk about. And, um, and I'll do one more video on the carbon cycle. And that'll be it for this section. So it should be pretty quick. Um, you guys have seen chemical equations before, but we're going to really break them down here, and we're going to talk about how to balance them, which is something we haven't talked about before. So I think I've been pretty good about showing balanced chemical equations throughout. Um, but after this, you have the ability to go back and double check me on that. I might have had one or two where I just was trying to get a basic idea across. Maybe I dropped a couple atoms here or there. Who knows? So um, to be clear about what this is, so this is going to be you know, how we represent chemical processes on paper, or chemical reactions. So this is how we write them out. So, you know, you can do a chemical reaction in the lab, and then this is how we describe it on paper. And this is actually probably, I think, the most popular topic. Mo most people say this is their favorite thing in this class, is balancing chemical equations or reactions, however you want to say it. Um, because apparently you all actually want to be accountants uh, more than anything else. You just count stuff up on one side, count stuff up on the other, make sure it matches up. That's what this boils down to. But let's take a second before we get into it and talk about chemical versus physical processes. I talked about this earlier like way earlier in the class. But let's take a minute and make sure it's clear now because this is going to be for chemical reactions, for chemical processes. So chemical processes, these are going to involve rearranging atoms. We're going to take one set of compounds, we're going to make another. So like we did condensation reactions, those were chemical processes. We started with one set of molecules, we ended with another. Or hydrolysis, same deal. We started with something in water and we got two separate molecules that were not like what we started with. So this is rearranging atoms. Um, they're not always reversible. Sometimes it's a one-way ticket. And if they are reversible, uh, they're not easy to reverse. You have to do a whole other chemical reaction. At least not easy compared to physical processes. So when we talk about like a physical process, we don't rearrange the atoms. There's no, no rearranging of bonds or anything like that. So molecules slash atoms are not rearranged. So for example, it's basically phase changes is the easiest description of a physical process I can think of. And so, um, you know, water. We freeze water, we melt water. So it's easily reversible. What do you do? You just change the temperature of the environment around the water. It turns into ice. What do you want to do to melt the ice? Well, you take it out of the freezer, put it on the counter, and it melts. You don't have to do much. You want to make ice again? Put it back in the freezer. Do that a couple times and you'll have some horrible tasting ice. It'll taste something like whatever you have in your freezer. Fish sticks or whatever. It'll never be the good thing. So I'm like, oh, this ice tastes like ice cream. No, it's always something much worse. It tastes like the old ham that's been in there since the previous owners left. It's been in there since like 1972 or whatever. That's what your ice is going to taste like. I don't know why. Nature is cruel. Okay, so these are easily reversible. Or like, you know, inflating a tire. That's a physical process. We're not rearranging any atoms. We're just changing where air is. Deflating a tire, that's pretty easy to do too. You just let the air out. So very easily reversible. Um, so we, this section is really going to be about this. We're going to talk about chemical processes. Physical processes, um, you know, it, it would be like a phase change. So you have something like liquid water it becomes solid water. 
these atoms, so you have two hydrogens bonded to oxygen, you have two hydrogens bonded to an oxygen, so these atoms don't get rearranged. This is a physical process. So we're going to focus in on chemical processes throughout here. And it's going to be kind of a, a general situation I'll talk about. You're not going to be expected to balance anything too crazy. But let's get into it. So let's say we have an example here. So first I'm just going to describe a reaction verbally. And then I'm going to write the chemical equation for it. And you're going to see why chemists do the second option. You're going to see how much less work it is. So, we can have hydrogen gas. And if we have that, and oxygen gas, uh, we put them together. Maybe we give them a little bit of ignition source. Ignition source. I don't know why that word's so hard for me to say right now. You ignite it. Um, they will react to form water vapor. That was a sentence. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not the end of the world. But you know there's an easier option coming because, well, it is a chemistry class. So, what is the easier option? Well, I just write out my molecules and their phases. We'll talk about all this in a second. This is the first time we're really diving into this. So this is my chemical equation. It's not balanced yet. So we're going to talk about that in a second. So hydrogen gas, oxygen gas. Remember they're both diatomic elements so they're going to be H2 and O2. They're not going to be by themselves. And then water is H2O. So that's the formula for water, in case you forgot. We've talked about it quite a bit in this class. Hopefully it's looking familiar now. It is important to biological systems. So why am I saying this isn't balanced? Well, remember matter is conserved. We cannot create or destroy matter. And if I look on the left, I have two hydrogen atoms. If I look on the right, I have two hydrogen atoms. That's not bad. But if I look on the left, I have two oxygen atoms. Remember, this means there's two of these atoms. So they were bonded together. Now they're going to be bonded to hydrogens. And on the right... I look around, I see one oxygen. So I have two and one. I lost an oxygen. I can't do that. That's not conservation of mass. It's not, they don't just magically appear and disappear. I'm not just pulling oxygens out of a hat or shoving them in and they disappear. We're rearranging. So matter cannot be created or destroyed, but we can shuffle it around. We can change where it is. And so we're shuffling it over here. But I have to have everything I started with accounted for at the end. Or else I broke, I broke existence. So, what do I do? Well, we have these things called stoichiometric coefficients, and we're going to break down the names of everything in here in a minute. But essentially what I can do is go like, well, I'm going to make two waters. Okay, that's what that big two in front means. It means there's two waters. So now I have two oxygens on the right, because I have two waters, but they each have one oxygen, so that gives me two oxygens. And I'll go through this in a more formal process as well. But now on the left I have two hydrogens, and on the right I now have four hydrogens. So guess what I do? go well, on you two hydrogens or two hydrogen gas molecules. So now I have four. Gets confusing with these diatomics I know. So now I have four H's on the left, four H's on the right, two O's on the right, two O's on the left. That's balanced. All of my stuff I started with is accounted for. So let's break this down. Let's talk about the the um, lay of the land here. So on the left we have reactants. And I think I talked about this um, when we did condensation reactions, but just a nice reminder. We put our reactants together, we perform a chemical reaction, we make products. How do we represent the chemical reaction happening? We use this arrow that points left to right, and that's our reaction arrow. And then these numbers, in the absence of a number, means there's a 1, so I have 1, 0, 2. Chemists are lazy, we just always imply 1. Seemingly every time. But these are called stoichiometric. Oh, now I've done it. Coefficients. And so that's how many of each molecule that we have. So there's the formula for the molecule, and there's how many there are. People get mixed up on this. So it's not like we want to say like H4O2. That would be a whole other molecule. We want to say there's two H2O. So there's an H2O over here floating around, there's an H2O over here floating around, but they're not. 
one molecule put together. They are separate. But we made two of them to keep this balanced. Now, it's not like I only have to start with enough to make the minimum. I can put together a ton of stuff and make a bunch of these. But this ratio is going to hold throughout. And so what I'm saying is, like, for every two waters I want to make, it's going to take two H2s, it's going to take one O2. And so that's really helpful to me as a chemist, because it's all counted up nicely. And in addition to using, like, molecules, we could talk about this in terms of moles. Just a heads up, I could say two moles of this, one mole of that makes two moles of this. Just like I could say two dozen of these, one dozen of these makes two dozen of those. Same deal. And then, um, right here, almost forgot. This is our phase of matter. You guys aren't going to be required to label these, but I like to show everything. And so if you've got a G, well, that's gas. If you've got an L, that's liquid. And so it's just what state is the matter in. S is solid. And there's one more that's really important that comes up a lot. And that's AQ, which is aqueous. And what that means is it is dissolved in water. So we do a lot of chemistry in water mediums. And so we have aqueous for dissolved in water. So these are all our phases of matter here that you have to know for the class. There's a few others. There's a notation for plasma and there's some other stuff in there too. We're not going to worry about it. So... How do I know this is balanced? Let's kind of rewind back to that and write it out. So if I count it up, I've got four H's here. I've got four H's here. I've got two oxygen atoms over here. And I have two oxygen atoms over here. These are both equal. I have a balanced chemical equation. If they're not equal, I have to adjust my coefficients. You don't change the formulas. You change the coefficients. So... Let's do another one. Let's put it to practice. So I'm going to write it out. I'll pause for a second. Feel free to pause the video take a shot at this once I write it out. So I'm going to describe the chemical reaction. I want you to write the chemical equation for it. So. Solid carbon can react with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide gas. And so carbon dioxide is CO2. <clears throat> so take a shot at that. Have fun with it. Start with your reactants, start with your products and then we'll work through it. Okay. So, I kind of threw you in the deep end there. Maybe you didn't know what to do. Maybe you, you kind of figured your way through it. <clears throat> so let's talk about the process of going from here to a chemical formula, or chemical reaction. Carbon, the element. Carbon is just C. It's not diatomic. I don't need to worry about anything else. It's a solid. You don't have to do that but I'm going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out all my pieces and then I'm going to see if it's balanced and adjust accordingly. Oxygen gas is O2 and CO2 gas looks like so. Alright, so there we go. Is this balanced? Is this a balanced equation yet? Because I have all the pieces but do I have the right numbers of them? And so I've got one carbon here. I've got one carbon here two oxygens here and two oxygens here. It's a balanced chemical equation. I tricked you. I gave you an easy one to balance because literally you just write it out and you're good. And I even gave you the formula of the product. So let's try something a little more difficult. Let's step it up. Let's make table salt in the most dangerous way imaginable. And I'll give you some more hints and tips on how to do these easily, more easily. So, solid sodium metal will react with chlorine gas 
Nice yellow cloud of death. I think I told you guys about how it was the first chemical weapon in World War II. So it's famous. Not exactly loved by all. Uh, so it will react with chlorine gas to form solid sodium chloride. Take a shot. I, I showed you really everything you need to do to get this started, and then you just got to make sure it's balanced. All right. This doesn't seem totally focused. Well, that's better. There we go. There we go. Now you can be mad that you don't have a high resolution of the other one. But, you know, it was your glasses prescription. It wasn't the screen. So, sodium metal. Look at your periodic table. What's sodium? Chemical symbol is Na, because we only use chemical symbols here. It's a solid, so I'll write the S, but you don't have to. I'm just, you know, I try to model good behavior when I can. I don't always. But, um, okay, that's our reactant, so now we have our reaction take place, and what do we make? Sodium chloride. Do you remember what sodium chloride is? That's one that you can figure out from the name. That's an ionic compound. You make sodium chloride in a whole lot of heat. You know, try not to burn your house down doing this one. Not the safest way to make salt by any imagination, by any any means necessary. I don't know if there's a worse way, uh, but there's definitely better. Okay, so don't forget, by the way, chlorine diatomic, right? So we've got all our diatomics. I go Hofbrinkel, so hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. I got fluorine in there? Yeah. Hofbrinkel. So your your uh, worksheet of things to memorize early on calls it Brinkelhoff. I do not agree with the Brinkelhoff extremists. I am a Hofbrinkel man to the bone. I attended Hofbrinkel High School and uh, you know, I refuse. I refuse to bend the knee to Brinkelhoff. It's not going to happen. But however you remember it, or like there's like the have no fear of cold beer or something. I don't know. I don't do that one. I don't like words in there. Words confuse me. They're dangerous. Okay, so. That's a diatomic element. We got a little off track there about that. Is this balanced? Well, I got one sodium. I got one sodium. That's a good start. Two chlorines, one chlorine. Oh, man. We're going to have to do some work. All right. So I want to make these chlorines line up. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bring in a stoichiometric coefficient. I'm going to say I'll make two. Two NaCLs. Okay, now I've got two Cls on the right. Two Cls on the left. Because remember, there's two ways. You know, you can have the little subscript for how many atoms there are. And you can also have this guy. And, uh... You can have them combined too, like with the H2O. If I have two H2Os, I have four H's. Remember that. So, so you got to pay attention to both little subscripts and coefficients. So now I'm done, right? I'm balanced. That's it. That's all I had to do. Do you agree with my my sentiment there? If you're saying no, how dare you? Make me do more work. Who do you think you are? What makes you the way that you are? What gives you the right? Okay, so. What's the problem? I got the right number of chlorines. Well, I got two sodiums on the right. I only got one on the left. Guess what I do? Bring a two in. And we can double check. We got two NAs. I got two CLs. And now I got two NAs. I got two CLs. They equal each other. Bam! That is a balanced chemical equation. So we are pretty much home free on this. But. I do want to talk about a special type of chemical reaction. So combustion reactions. And these are important for reasons we'll talk about later, but definitely being able to balance them is a good thing to know. And you can really spin your wheels if you don't go about this the right way. So if you've ever seen anything lit on fire, you've seen a combustion reaction. If you've seen a gas grill, charcoal grill, fireplace, campfire, house fire, trailer fire, um, the Cuyahoga River on fire, you've seen a combustion reaction. You've seen it. You know, 
your your uh, your ex's car on fire. No idea how it happened. Combustion reaction. And actually, your cars, when they're moving, use combustion reactions as well. But you don't get to see it. They're hidden in the engines. They're secret combustion reactions. Unless you have one of those fancy electric cars. In which case, you just have a, a very um, souped-up golf cart. And I'm not at all jealous of you. So, um, what do we do here? Well, so first off, they always have the same sort of setup. So you're going to have a couple things. So there's, there's like a distinct fingerprint, a way to identify, like, I know this is a combustion reaction. Um, so they are always going to involve a, or a, an organic compound, so something carbon-based. And it's going to be reacting with oxygen gas, which if you think about how do you put out a fire? You want to take the oxygen away, that's one way to do it. You cut off the oxygen supply, the fire dies out. So you can smother a fire, you can put water on it to put it out. All kinds of tricks. The water will displace oxygen around it, put it out. CO2, um, fire extinguishers, displace oxygen with CO2. The water also has the extra effect of if you cool it down, it will stop burning as well. You have to be at a certain temperature often for a combustion reaction to take place. That's why this piece of paper isn't just auto-igniting right now, bursting into flames. At least I hope it doesn't. My laptop's getting a little toasty over there today. Maybe you could set that piece of paper off. Um, you can't see it. I'm pointing at empty space to you, but don't worry about it. Um, Alright, so it's reacting with oxygen gas, and the products are always going to be, so it's always going to form carbon dioxide and water. So you see an organic compound plus O2, so it'll look something like this. You know it's a combustion reaction. This is our wild card. This is what we have to balance around. This is our generic example. A more specific example, we could have something like glucose. Don't know why I would choose that one randomly. It's not like our bodies perform a combustion reaction with it to get energy or something analogous to a combustion reaction because, you know, uh, no one's bursting into flames because they ate too many candy bars, as far as I know. If that does start to happen, um, you know, I have Mars companies in trouble. You know, start running commercials where it's like, oh, someone's being annoying and you give them a Snickers bar and then they die because they burst into flames. That's how they would sell those. Instead of them being like happier and normal. Alright, so combustion of glucose. Well, our chemical formula, we don't need the structure, just the chemical formula here. It was a six carbon carbohydrate, so C6H12O6. We're gonna react that with O2. And we're gonna get CO2 and H2O. So how did I know all that? I knew all that from all I had to tell you was combustion and what was burning. So you see combustion and you know all of this. I tell you what's burning, you know this last piece. We filled in the blank right here. Okay. Is this balanced? Hopefully you said no. If you said yes, just pretend if anyone's around you that that was actually correct, but now that we're all on the same page that it's not, just keep following along. Alright, so, um, well, nothing really seems to line up. And there's a trick here, there's a problem, there's a complication. So there's something I don't want to do when I balance this. But first off, I can just be like, I got one carbon on the right, I got six on the left. That's definitely not balanced. I can just tell you right now. I don't even need to look at the other elements. But before we get into this, notice how there's oxygen on this, and this, and this, and this. Guess what that means? If you see an element show up in more than one place on the left and or the right, don't start with it. Because once you balance the oxygen, you've literally you've just done the hardest way you could to balance the whole equation. And so I'm just going to start with the carbon. So I'm going to balance carbon, then I'm going to balance hydrogen, and lastly, 
I will balance oxygen because it shows up everywhere. I could start with hydrogen if I wanted. That's not the end of the world. Starting with oxygen, you're going to just be you're going to be just going in circles forever. But if you go this way, it'll just be one, two, three, done. Much faster. And so ideally, at the end, all we got to do is just deal with the O2. All right. So I've got six carbons. Guess what that means? Six CO2s. Now I've got six carbons and six carbons. I've got 12 hydrogens. That means I need to make six waters. So six waters will give me 12 hydrogens because there's two per water. Six times two is 12. All right, so now that's done. That's done. The tricky part. All right, so I have 12, 18 oxygens here. There's six on, I need 18 on the left. There's already six accounted for here, so I need 12 more which means I have six O2s. All right, and I don't need to write anything in front of this because it's just one of them. So I can double check. I've got six plus 12 is 18. Six times two, so that's 12 plus six is 18. We have a balanced chemical equation. So I wanna be clear. Balance the oxygens last. You see a combustion reaction, balance the oxygens last. And this is good advice in general. For any element you see showing up in more than one place on the same side. So oxygen shows up all over the place on both sides. But you'll always have it show up once on the left and once on the right. Like carbon here. Otherwise, what happened to it? Like why is it in your reaction if it's not in your product? Something's wrong. So it, it needs to show up in two places. But if it starts showing up in three or more, like in this case four, that's an element you want to do at the end. That's my piece of advice. So, we'll do one more. There is a little little trick that can happen. Make sure we cover it. Let's balance octane's combustion. And then I've actually given you the whole playbook. This is the last one. So what is octane? It is C8H10. Can you write out the whole balanced chemical equation from here? Or can you at least write skeleton? Can you just write all your reactants on your products before balancing from this? You should be able to. I would expect you to be able to. Okay. So, well, what are my reactants? Well, there's my organic compound. What's my other reactant going to be? Well, it's a combustion reaction, so it's going to be O2. And this is probably the most commonly forgotten part. So don't forget you're reacting with O2. I'm going to make CO2 and H2O. If I don't make CO2 and H2O, I'm not doing a combustion reaction. All right, then we go, is it balanced? And 99 out of 100 times I ask that question, the answer is a resounding no. I expect it to be no every time, and one time out of 100, I make a fool of myself. Because I go, oh, it is. But this is not one of those cases. So what do I want to do last? I want to hold off on balancing the oxygen. So let's start with the carbon. I've got eight carbons. It's going to be eight CO2s. That's going to get me eight carbons on the right. I've got ten hydrogens. That's going to give me five waters. Okay. And now let's total it up. So I've got 16, 21 oxygens. Uh-oh. Uh oh. How do I get 21? I can only have I can have two, four, six, eight, blah blah blah, 20, 22. I can only have even numbers over here, so I have what's like an even odd mismatch. I don't have anything over here to bail me out, so I have to have an even number. So what do I do? I've got this even odd mismatch. I double the hydrocarbon. We're going to put a 2 right here, which means this becomes a 16 and this becomes a 10. If I double this, I've got to double everything else I put on here. And so now I have 42 oxygens because that's going to double as well. Well, look at that. I have an even number. That means I need 21 of these. 
That's my balanced chemical equation. So that's the last dirty trick I can throw at you. I've shown you the whole playbook. Um, in terms of what I expect here, just be able to balance simple chemical reactions. You know, if I just write out the unbalanced chemical reaction, can you balance that? If I describe the chemical reaction, like in the past, like on the last page or two, can you do that? If I tell you, like, combustion of something, that's probably the most difficult um, that I can throw at you. And combustion reactions are going to be really important later because that's what our metabolism does. That's what respiration is. We inhale oxygen. We burn something like, not, <laughs> I don't know anyone that burns octane, you know, uh, but we burn, like, glucose, right? And I balanced that before. It's on the floor now. I'm too lazy to go get it. And we make CO2 and H2O. So we breathe out CO2. We inhale O2. We exhale CO2. So that's our respiration process. And it's because we are doing something that's analogous. We're not doing a full-on combustion reaction. It's heavily mediated. So combustion reaction is just like you get it hot, you get some oxygen you know, from the atmosphere around it, and boom, you got a flame. We're not walking around with little flames in us. Um... It might feel that way as you get older and eat a bunch of chili or something, or too much pizza. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, give it a couple decades, and you'll find out. When I was young, I was like, what are all these people complaining about indigestion for? And I'm, I'm not there yet, but I've had some moments where I'm like, oh, I think I'm, I think I'm starting to understand now. But I haven't quite had a fall on, thankfully. I haven't been going around eating Tums like they're Tic Tacs. Um, but what we do is heavily mediated so there's a lot of enzymes we're going to spend a whole section talking about it it's very heavily controlled and so we do the same thing but we don't do it just direct we don't just go zip you know hydrocarbon to co2 and h2o we try to because then it just drops all the energy all the energy drops out of our, our process we want to be able to capture as much as possible so we want it to we don't want it to fall like a rock. We want it to be like a feather. We want it to drift back and forth and slowly come down and we can grab as much energy out along the way as possible as it slowly you know, makes its way to the lower energy state as it slowly drops out of the picture. That's what we're doing. That's what our bodies do. That's what we're doing right now. If you're not doing it right now, that's I guess that's one last final grade for me to enter. Um, and my condolences to your family. But also, you know, you got to always look on the bright side one less grade to enter. Can't lose track of that. So, that's the whole story on balancing chemical reactions for this class. You don't have to worry about writing the phases. I stopped doing that because I don't expect you to, but I did show it earlier, so you'd be familiar with it. But you do have to balance correctly. You do have to know the doubling trick if you need it. And that's the last kind of dirty trick I can throw at you. And it can happen too where, you know, you can get an even on mismatch either way. Maybe you have an even number over here, but you have one oxygen on this thing, so you can only get an odd number over here. You still do the same trick. You just double the hydrocarbon. If you can't get the O2s to give you the right number, double the hydrocarbon, and then double your coefficients, and then come back and do the oxygen. That's all there is to it. All right, so next we're going to talk about the global carbon cycle, and that'll be it for this section. So this one's not too bad.